Christ with pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you guys for being here today. Thank you for coming up. Um, any additions or deletions to the agenda? Okay. Uh, no public comment. Superintendent report. Wanted to report out to all of you this evening that we were able to acquire, or the town was able to acquire all of the easements on the Holtz Road project. So um, that means no delay, hopefully, to move forward with that. Uh, we are looking to do a, a final pool work session on Thursday, July 11th at approximately 6 or 6.15. We'll fine tune that as time gets closer, but that would be the final renderings of the natatorium. You said July 11th? Uh, Thursday, July 11th, 6 p.m. Um, before school let out, we wanted to report that we sat down with the union to take a look at all of our extracurricular activities, the positions, the, uh, the ones that may be outdated, the ones that need revised job descriptions. We, at the same time, uh, Wikipedia style, we have created an, an extracurricular activities handbook. And so when I say Wikipedia style, we shot a link out to all of the coaches and sponsors and say, hey, look, document like what you currently do in this role, what that looks like. And so now we're laying over um, dates for season, approximately how much time is invested. Um, and we're doing this with the purpose of rolling into negotiations on September 15th. And that will be a big topic of discussion. So just wanted to let you know that we're already working with the union and uh, under continual improvement and shared responsibility um, for our extracurricular activities. The last item I wanted to touch base with you on was in regards to graduation and just get some feedback for those of you who are able to attend and um, just talk about like what went well, what would you recommend for improvement? Why did you think of it being indoors versus outdoors? Should we consider that? Any comments on parking? Why did you hear from community members? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna back away now. Um, well, I heard a lot of positives about it being inside with the climate control. I think people were pleasantly surprised at how everybody fit comfortably in there, how they were able to um, just feel closer to the action. Um, definitely heard great things about the parking. There were no complaints there. Um, didn't hear any complaints about the off-site parking. Um, that seemed to flow really well. That's uh, all team effort. Mm -hmm. From that process that you may not be aware of started uh, conversation-wise in December, but then face-to-face -face meetings started in January, measuring every bleacher, mm -hmm. calculating, okay, what's our best estimate, um, coordination of all-site parking, color coding, maps. Um, any additional I heard comments? nothing but great things. People were happy of the length of it. It wasn't dragged out. Uh, it kind of reminded me of the old days when Don Yeoman was superintendent. He had a goal of a one hour and be one and done. And I think we were like one hour and five or ten minutes. It wasn't that much longer. So compliments to everybody. I was back in my truck by an hour twenty maybe. Okay. Does the yeah, board, but you mean, walk slow. No, I just, even getting out of the parking lot seemed to go everything seemed to go very very smooth yeah. yes I think it was a great graduation yeah I, think, I, I mean I liked it because like people said it's I think you were more involved the, the parents were more involved with actually seeing their kids get their diploma and all that mm -hmm. like it, was, it was very close to it, I would say yeah. yes do you have any hard feelings one way or the other if it's outdoors versus indoors as long as our numbers stay where they're at and we can maintain, you know, enough um, gas passes, I think that it's nice to have it inside. We're right there on the cusp, though, of it being of having too many students. Yeah, the size of the graduating class would be a we weren't uh, factor. limiting. I mean, we limited the number of people that can come, but we didn't refuse people at this time, did we? So 
Last year, kids were afforded seven tickets. Okay. This year, kids were afforded seven tickets. Okay. If they didn't use their seven and they only used two, were they able to give some away to others? On Facebook, it's like a raffle. Mm -hmm. okay. So <laughs> the approach that we took this year was we actually sent out a survey uh, saying, hey, how many tickets are you requesting up to seven? We also surveyed how many vehicles or parking passes would you need? So that was all part of the planning. Um, and regardless what, where you have it, the parking's going to be the same. Yep, we just needed to know handicap-wise, well, like will you need a handicap parking or in a lot for an elderly person? Mm -hmm. And then what we were able to do is a message did go out. If, there's a, if anybody would like more tickets, um, here's a, a way for you to request more. Mm -hmm. So people who only used four tickets, then we had three remaining back, and so we were able to... Hand additional out. So, so the ones that needed, didn't need the seven, you kept the extras for people who didn't. Correct. And then we did see, you know, the Facebook, and so either people Had didn't to back out, didn't or... know to to reach back out, or maybe they did reach back out, and the school said we're all out now. Yeah. And so then the swap. Speaking of the handicap, there was one thing I noticed, and I don't know how we navigate this, but um, there was a woman who was handicapped but she was alone she didn't have anybody dropping her off and so she parked but our closest parking spot for the handicap was still a long walk to get into the school and then once you're in the school it's the long walk and I thought well is there closer at the front is there I, there really wasn't any way I could think of parking wise but I thought man even if we just had a wheelchair available I don't know if our nurse has one but just sitting off to the side it would have helped her once she got into the building mm -hmm. um, to, for somebody to just roll and it down somebody there. would have pushed her yeah yeah so just for future planning um, having something like that just at the front door available in case it because it is such a long walk yes I think that's about the most complaint I hear like not just from graduation but from any sporting event in the pool or the gym is the yeah. walk the walk from the and even when we put the new navigatorium yeah. and that entrance in, it's still going to be a long mm -hmm. walk. So there's really, logistically, there's no way around that, but maybe we could have something available if okay. necessary. And the positive thing about having it inside is you don't have to worry about rescheduling if the weather's bad. That's a positive thing. And for me, I like the air conditioning, you know, and in June, it's unpredictable. Dana and I both noted when we got in there the energy. You could feel yeah. the energy, and you don't feel that outside. So. And but the only thing I noticed was when, when the students were speaking, you could hear the humming of the air conditioner. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that. That's a catch twenty two. I don't know if that was anything that anyone complained about, maybe maybe not being able to hear them or. I wonder if it was the same in the bleachers as it was for us yeah, sitting there. It that's always something I'm cognizant of because mm -hmm. it. it it distracts me and annoys right, that's, me. That's, that's, that's what I heard, so. <laughs> really? Uh, so I can't hear <laughs> right. anything, so it doesn't matter. But Could you hear where you were sitting? We, we redesigned that sound system with graduation in mind because we were having sound issues in there. So uh, the, with regards to the bleachers, yes, you could definitely hear them out there because there are now speakers pointed directly at those people. Okay. The only area that might have been a little bit difficult would have been probably closer to where I was, kind of up on that area. You had some black chairs behind the graduates. That area is difficult because it's not where we typically have seating during a sporting event, mm -hmm. nor would it be something where uh, you've got a uh, uh, overhead air handler that's pointing right down at it. So yeah. those folks might have had a little more difficult of a time, but everyone else, it, they had speakers pointed right at them. Is so. there a possibility of putting portable units? It's something we can definitely investigate with the, uh, the sound company that put it in. They're doing all the rest of our facilities right now, so I can bring that up with them and see if they have any ideas for us. And then the, if you turn off the blowers, then you run the climate control because it can heat up pretty mm -hmm. quick. Right, that especially many if you have yeah. that many. Uh, I guess the only thing I seen on Facebook was uh, a parent was looking for another ticket because they said their one-year-old had to have a ticket. Is there a way that... Um, they can it, sort of just if the one-year-old is going to take up a seat, right. then they have to have a ticket. Otherwise, they would need to stay in your lap, just like on the airplanes. And there's no way we probably don't want really anybody controlling that, really. Right. Right. Kind of the honor system. No flight attendants here. <laughs> <laughs> we need ushers. 
Um, I've had boards in the past that have uh, wanted to be a part of what I did, right? Shake a hand, hand a diploma, and they would rotate out. I asked you if you wanted to do that. You indicated you didn't have an interest, which is completely okay. But now that it's fresh, do you have any desire to do that in the future? I don't know. When I first got the board, we shook everybody's hand. I like that too. We shook hands on, in Hebron. I don't know if I have to start hands if, somebody, When the whole board shakes hands, your hour ceremony now has turned into an hour Ooh. thirty. So or more. But if you if you like if I were to rotate out and one of you take my spot and then you do the next thirty and then somebody else, mm -hmm. is how it has worked successfully in, in my journey. I'd be open to that. Mine as well. But no obligation. I just want to afford it. It was always a nice touch for those who wanted to be a part of it, mm -hmm. but then there were some people that I, I'm i okay to just sit here and watch, and that's okay too. Mm -hmm. I can totally go on Yeah, I'm I mean, different. if it works for all of us to do it, then perfect, and if it doesn't, then yep. I'm fine. I would love that, yeah. Okay. There we go. Great feedback, thank you. That was Deb, easy. when you're on um, the July 11th, are you, would you be able to I FaceTime in? I would call in. I don't know, I'm going out to the East Coast. Okay. Like Washington, D.C. and Maryland. Okay. So I just have to try to make sure I can work it in. Oh, I was suffering okay, last maybe we can uh, zoom during graduation. I had a, okay. a piece of wood go up underneath my nail, and it was killing me, so I couldn't yeah. shook hands last week. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't have been able to. <laughs> um, before we move on, I'm going to just step into your board or your superintendent report. Um, the Holtz Road, I just want to let you guys know, um, on the background, Andy was playing the real estate agent for that whole transaction, and it was not an easy transaction. It's been going on for months, and negotiating with those um, landowners, and you know, in a bit of a hostile scenario. And so, um, just want to recognize the work that you and time you put into making that work and happen, and that partnership with the town and the school. So, thank you for doing that. You're welcome. I, you know, nobody likes granting an easement. And because it was, at the end of the day, our project, even though the town is the one getting the easement, I felt like because we were involved, it was our school community relations to be a part of that. I will tell you, I think that we maintained our relationship with those two landowners as having a still a positive relationship with them. So that, at the end of the day, was the reason to be involved in happy to do it and you were right <laughs> it took a long time yeah and so. when it's all one when it's all said and done it will look a lot nicer ultimately yeah. it will it'll, it'll be function. it'll function much better yep. yep yep so thank you all right thank you staff recognition yeah so the person being recognized tonight michelle whitebrock just a little bit of background and kevin can chime in too she serves as an el assistant in our district and has uh, recently gone to school on an additional credentials and um, what's difficult for schools to realize is that when you have students and parents who come to the community and enroll in school and they don't speak English even if the kid has a degree of proficiency and the parent doesn't imagine for a moment if you were a parent of that kid and you didn't know how to read the enrollment forms, the handbooks, the rules, you couldn't communicate with the teacher, you know? And so Michelle has been a great advocate in, um, in moving us forward and she's worked with Kevin, and Kevin's afforded, you know, solutions to that. So that's the background to this. Uh, Michelle Whiterock. Michelle has reached a level of excellence by being the first to translate the student handbook and report cards into Spanish to support students and their families. She is an advocate for diversity within the school district by creating inclusion. And so that's tonight's staff recognition. Every time I talk to her and find out the depth of her experience and knowledge, I just, I'm like, you're like the coolest person in the world. You have so much to offer and she has such, you know, forethought on things that something like this does not surprise me that she did and is recognized but we're very fortunate that she's putting that time in for our kids you want people around you that make you better and i think she's making our school district better 100 percent. all right 
Board member reports? I have a report. <laughs> As a member of the NYSEC Board of Directors, we had our board meeting last night. We had the traditional agenda items, but some of the things that stood out for me for the meeting was uh, uh, agreeing to the, the schedule of our future meetings. Uh, every month we're going to have them, although superintendents get one, the month of July off. We couldn't get it. Uh, <laughs> one of the big things that stood out was they conducted their, uh, their safety director conducted a vulnerability assessment of the entire building. And as my background in, in uh, security and safety, he did an outstanding job looking at all the details. He validated the things that were doing well and highlighted the things that needed to be improved and validated all of that with, with evidence, pictures, and things that define why things need to be done. So that was a good thing to ensure that the staff and the students are safe over there. The other thing that really stood out in this was the number of resignations at the end of the school year. Uh, NYSEC has had a tremendous over uh, uh, turning of, of uh, uh, employees, but this month we had 33 that resigned. And a big part of that though was Merrillville is no longer part of the special ed co-op. And so many of those were part of that, but we did have some of our people leaving to do other things. So. Those are the things that kind of stood out from the meeting last night. Thank you for attending those. Anybody else? Okay. Moving on. Uh, we're going to open the 1028 public hearings on the proposed purchase of school buses, chillers, and technology project. Um, there's an opportunity for public input. Uh, this is the second public hearing. And do we have any uh, public input? Okay. Close I'll that go out. Through, I'll go through the presentation, though. We, we do want to do that. So. Yeah. Uh, okay, so for general obligation bonds here, I'll kick it off and then I'll pass it over to uh, Mr. Jim Elizondo from the Seaport, and then I'll also pass it over to you, Mr. Thomas Peterson, here to close it out. So, general obligation bonds. Uh, we went through the similar, the same presentation before, but I'll just go through it again here. Uh, they're a type of lending for school districts, a mortgage to say, for school districts or for municipalities. Uh, the principal and interest of, the, of these bonds are actually paid back through the debt service fund. And they're typically a lower interest rate because they're short term and they're low risk and uh, just investors see them as a good point uh, to invest in. General obligation bonds and the operations fund. I wanted to draw a little correlation here between the two because many of the expenditures that come out of the operations fund could be paid for out of GO bonds. Uh, buses being one of them, capital improvements, technology upgrades. Operations fund has personnel in there which is not eligible for general obligation bonds, but you can buy stuff and improvements out of general obligation bonds, much like the operations fund. Uh, the expenditures and costs in the operations fund have risen over the past two years here. Uh, just some numbers here to let you know. Uh, diesel fuel, comparing 21 to 23, right now it's $48,000 at least more a year. Uh, buses, same four buses that we bought in 2021 versus now, 73, almost $74,000 more a year for those four buses. Um, and tires have seen an 11.3% increase, another high increase. So like those operational costs are going up in our operations fund, yet the levy is maximum, we've got a maximum growth quotient in there of only 4%. So when I talk about the 21% increase in diesel fuel that we've got, the 15% in buses, 11.3, that operations fund is really getting a squeeze there for what you can actually do. Uh, with your, your levy. Operations fund revenue comes from our property tax bill. Same thing with your debt service, it comes from property tax, both of them. If you have an assessed value that increases in our area, all our homes keep rising and stuff, you get a little more capacity to issue more debt within that same tax rate. So our debt service tax rate can stay the same, it can go, you know, if you can borrow more, but the debt, the debt service rate will stay the same because your assessed value goes up, but your operations fund is throttled by that 4% increase only in levy. So that, 
that really kind of hinders your operation. Just to show that a little bit here, this is just an example. It's not actually numbers that we're using for this bond issuance, but an example of that. If you have a total um, budget for your operations fund that also includes 1.25 million in buses and technology there, uh, if you were to slide that slice of the pie right over to debt service, as long as your AV is going up and you can not increase your debt service rate, you can keep your tax rate the same, that could fit nicely into the pie over on debt service, and that empty space that you pulled that slice out from could be used for other things within the operations fund as well. So looking, since I mentioned assessed value, I have a slide in here about our trends of assessed value that we've had here, because it's important to uh, note that we've had a steady increase of assessed value throughout this period here. So this is a 10-year average of 5.92% increase each year in value on our homes. Uh, we do have a peak in a valley in there. You can see there's a crazy year with 2023 where assess assessments went way up 21.53 and then our valley there is 2018 where it only went up 1.05. Even if I take those two out of the average here, we're still at a 4.58 increase on average over this 10 year span. So uh, what we're looking for out of these general obligation bonds are we have a LHS chiller project right now. Um, our chillers, which were installed in 2018, are struggling even though we moved them for airflow issues and they are brand new, they are too, they're still not getting the air return that they need. Uh, the wall that is right uh, to the west of those chillers there is very high and it's the chillers are not getting the draft over the wall in order to pull in fresh air. They're kind of recircling the hot air which tends to, uh, on hot days like we're having now, shut them down and let them cool down before they restart up. Uh, in fact, in graduation, you may not have known it, even though we had crews on site there, we, it went down three times during graduation, but we didn't feel it because we had crews standing on guard getting those things going right away. So it is a problem, um, not only from the fact that it shuts down, but it also is wearing the life of those chillers down faster. And uh, they won't last in that spot as long as we want them to. So there is a project there to move those chillers closer to, closer to I want to say door 13, so around closer to the cafeteria, create a back dock space there and get them away from that wall and have better air return. So that's the project number one. Project number two is would be safety and security. Uh, we're looking at a camera replacement district-wide here to align with our other municipalities, county and our local um, police station there with theirs, and access control here. Now we are writing grants for some of this and our fingers are crossed for that, but there is a match too. So Either way, if it's the full project that would need to fit into this or just the match if we got the grant funds, uh, there would be a need for safety and security. Door access is the other thing that we're looking at uh, to replace here as well. Door access system throughout the district. Um, in some situations, we need to start upgrading that for parts and everything. And the last thing would be pulling their buses out of the operations fund and purchasing them through GEO bonds here. Uh, four per year and it would be for the next two years that we would be looking at. Any questions on that? I thought if we get Mr. Elizondo's presentation up here. Did you say moving the chillers? Or moving the chillers and replacing them. Okay. Right now, we're still working on that. Exciting to see work starting up as soon as you get people out of buildings. Yeah. Um, continuing on with Dana's comments, we go to the next slide. Um, first, we start with a summary of just your debt service fund. So these are all the different bond issues and pieces. And you'll notice the yellow or orange is the most recent bond issue. As we expected, that is the majority of what we have out over the next 20 years. And it does, you do see in 25, we have that debt service rate uh, projected to drop. 
and that I think when we go to the next slide, we can talk about uh, this is without this is just consolidated, so we got rid of all the colors. Uh, next page. Uh, your, your total school rate with the operations fund in gray at the bottom of the blue gets us to that dollar five, which you've been maintaining uh, over the last few years. So that's kind of our starting point of what we want to see what we can structure in and around that and not exceed that. On the next slide, we're propo proposing with this general obligation bond, a $5 million borrowing paid off over four to four and a half five years. We're showing it as two different bond issues uh, based on the idea that you may have expenses each you know each year. We do have the ability uh, when you consider the resolutions to sell everything at once or in some combination that fits your needs. So the approvals are for one or two or multiple series of bonds. We're showing it in broken in two because that's the way we originally were modeling. Is there an advantage of breaking it into two versus Doing the it's it's a toss up. It, depending on where rates are, there may be an advantage of locking it in. Depending on what you might think the legislature might do, you might want to get ahead of things and lock things in. But the idea of separating them does offer some efficiencies in timing with your projects. Mm -hmm. So you're not just sitting there with the money, having borrowed and paying interest until you're using it. So those are things we'll continue to evaluate. But I want to just point out that we have that flexibility with what we're proposing. And then both of those issues fit right within and do not exceed that dollar five total tax rate. So we're proposing uh, this uh, five million dollar general obligation bond does fit within your current total tax rate, and that is still assuming our conservative estimates of assessed value growth and flattening that assessed value growth to zero after 2029. It's also assuming six percent interest rates, which on a four to five year bond issue, that's well in excess of where we would be today. Uh, next page. So there are a few things that we wanted to highlight and these were highlighted in the last, last meeting also, but these are integral to your resolution you'll consider. Uh, first, the $5 million bond issue with estimated cost of issuance of 250,000 leaves you approximately four and three quarter million dollars for projects. Uh, again, as in with the past, we think that's conservative, that 250,000, we don't, we're not gonna cut to 150, but it will, anything you get there can move more towards projects. Uh, we're estimating the interest rates right now in our model from two to 6%, so they have a range. Um, again, when we actually sell the bonds, the real rate will come in there and you get every penny of that's saved that way. Uh, we, in the resolutions, have the final maturity not exceeding 2035. However, that is to give you the complete flexibility if something were to change in markets. Again, that prior model shows us that no more than five years. Um, and then estimated total interest cost of 891,000. That's based on those 6% rates. Uh, maximum tax impact. We talked about a zero impact to your total rate. But we have to look at this issue as it stands on its own. So as that other debt comes off, the maximum we would anticipate any potential year could be just under the 22 cents. But again, that's rate dropping off and the shoe horning in behind that to get us to the zero uh, over our dollar five. And then there's a couple of ratios at the bottom that really don't mean anything to most anybody, but the, our legislature wanted them in there. Um, I did get at a board meeting Monday night into a big discussion with a board member about this first ratio and he wanted it all explained. And the ratio is great when, you, when a buyer is looking to buy bonds or a rating agency is looking to bond, but they don't use any of these on their own. They would use these ratios in conjunction with eight or nine or ten other matrices and then kind of decide where things are. So you are right in the uh, lower, uh, just below average in Indiana. Uh, your direct debt and overlapping debt, that includes all debt in, in your taxing districts, not just you. And that is at 11%. That's probably just, it's up higher than where you were just because we've added more debt. But it's still at a level that is still very attractive in the market and we don't believe will cost you anything in interest rates. So, um, 
that's what it means to me. I'm not sure that the legislature, I, they just want some way to compare schools or at least allow that. I don't think it does that unless you look at all sorts of dynamics. Mm -hmm. Any questions? So if we pay that off in five years, that estimated total interest cost would come down. Come down. It would also come down, yes. So all of our assumptions are based on that worst case and that worst case term yeah. throws that total interest number much higher than we expect it to be. How close, when we talk about the 80 cent threshold, um, how close does that bring us? We stay where we are right now, which is 70. Yeah, I mean, we're keeping that in mind that yeah. we can stay just under that. But, um, you know, right now, unless we raise that or AB were to drop significantly, um, we're still just skirting under that. Okay. So, other questions? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Um, if you all don't mind, we're going to um, group numbers two through six all together for one motion and one adoption. Is everybody okay with doing it that way? Okay. So um, I'm gonna make a or um, ask for a motion in a second to adopt resolutions uh, 2024 04 through 08. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to adopt uh, resolution 2024-4 through 24 or 2024-8. Thank you. And over a second. Oh, second. Thank you. Motion a second. And okay. And close the public hearing. Oh yeah, public hearing is closed. Um, it's awfully warm for January, as I promised I'd be back in your January meeting. Um, sorry about that. Um, the five resolutions are pretty straightforward. The first, whenever uh, doing more than a million dollars of work, you have to do a resolution that sets forth where you expect to pay the money from to do the work, which is what the 1028 resolution. Fun fact, there's nothing that says 1028 anywhere in the legislation that just happened to be the House bill number when it was adopted about 40 years ago. The next one, you make a preliminary determination because your total tax rate is above for the debt service fund is above 40 cents. And so the preliminary determination basically finds the information that uh, Mr. Elizondo just gave you and sets forth those ratios and those numbers. Next is an additional appropriation resolution since this, <coughs> these projects were not in the original budget that you adopted back at the start of the year. For Dana to spend any of the money, we have to have an appropriation that she can tie it to. Next is the actual bond resolution, <clears throat> which is, you've heard the parameters from it, and it basically is the terms for how the bondholders will get paid back, what they have to do if they sell bonds while they're still outstanding, and again, it's very standard as a general obligation bonds. There's nothing fanciful in your resolution. And finally, a reimbursement resolution. Let's just say something goes wrong between the time we can actually close on the bond issues so that Dana has to move chillers and move them now, um, or something along that fact, or someone calls some buses or buy one, get one free, or anything along those lines. Uh, once we adopt this resolution, Dana would be allowed to make those payments and then reimburse the school's funds with the proceeds from the general obligation bonds. These five resolutions are standard for general obligation bond issue, and I would recommend adoption. Any questions, any further discussion? Okay, uh, we will go ahead and vote to adopt, again, resolutions 2024-04 through 2024-08. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Regular business consent items, number one, approve the mi minutes of the meeting held on Thursday, May 23rd, 2024. Do you want a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Approve payroll and claims. I'll make a motion. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay, board policy. Uh, first reading of proposed changes to board policy number 0144.3, conflict of interest. 
What is the name of this? Tech, tech office. office. Thank you. What are you looking for? Oh, you forgot. All right. I apologize. Um, we did not have copies for you to take a look at here. So I'm going to throw them up on the screen here. So the and Deborah can chime in um, as desired. Conflict of interest, basically the essence of this is that as board members um, under item A, if a board member or spouse or dependent has pecuniary interest in contract or purchase, basically all financial, that you would make that a known um, each year. Profiteering from public service, that's item B, for one year after leaving the board, a member of the board shall not attain that financial interest in any contract or purchase that was approved by the board during your time on the board, unless, one, there was a screening from any participation contract, has not and will not receive any part of the profit, and promptly gives notice to the board in the contract purchase. So the revision that has taken place is re regards into item C, and that's uh, board members serving um, in capacities on uh, such as parent teacher organization or booster group, um, not with a board member hat, but with your parent hat or community member hat on. And so why are we suggesting this revision? Um, four out of the five board members have kids in our school district and um, are involved parents. I'm the one that doesn't. <laughs> Could have a board member who loves something at Woodworking our school in. And, and, and <laughs> wants to be involved. And, but right now, according to this, you would not necessarily be allowed. Um, we're also in a day and age um, where it's hard to find people to serve. And so we've got people who not only serve on the board, but also have an interest in going above and beyond and serving in the capacity of, I just want to be a parent. So um, I don't know if there's discussion that you all want to have in regards to that. It's just clarifying and avoiding potential problems down the road. And the clarification is appropriate. So what we're uh, looking to revise is taking off that component that gives you the latitude to serve in those other additional capacities. The one caveat is, and that has always been that you can't serve in a role where you're making, you're Decisions. serving in a, a, a role where you're making money, like in that position, you're not getting any kickback That's from that. Clarify. You yeah. cannot be in a You probably role. could say it clearer than I just did, so <laughs> repeat what I just no. said. <laughs> so this conflict of interest yeah. does not include you being an employee of the district. So say my kiddo wants to be on a robotics team. I can volunteer as someone who comes in and helps on that robotics team and be a board member. I can't be a coach and get paid through the ECA schedule. Mm -hmm. That still remains that nobody on the board can hold a capacity like that, but we can volunteer our time in um, sports or clubs, parent teacher organizations. Mm -hmm. So much better than what I just said. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tonight is the first reading. We'll bring this back at the next board meeting for a second reading and then a, a revised adoption. Uh, the second item is in regards to community support organizations. Um, there was some wordsmithing here. Um, nothing essential that changes the essence. Um, I'll just read through this. The, the board appreciates the efforts of all organizations whose objectives are to enhance the educational experiences of the corporation students, to help meet educational needs of students, and or provide, we didn't feel like the word extra was necessary, provide educational benefits, um, period. In using the name, trademark, or intellectual property of the corporation or its schools in organizing a group whose identity derives from the school or schools of the corporation. The student organization thereby shares responsibility with the board for the welfare of participating students. So we're talking about organizations who are gonna take on the name of Tri Creek Schools or Three Creeks Elementary, Lake Prairie, etc. 
they're making a direct correlation with our school district and as a result you have jurisdiction over that um, in addition to parents and community members membership shall be available to the corporation's professional staff any new corporation support organizations that are going to use the name good offices trademark intellectual property of course must attain approval of the board as a re uh, prerequisite to organizing each approved corporation student organization shall work with the appropriate school setting and in cooperation with principals and other staff members each group will submit its bylaws and certificate of incorporation from the secretary of state to the superintendent or designee for approval and shall abide by the policies of the board and the guidelines established by the superintendent and then the superintendent has uh, five items here review the objectives uh, monitor the plans ensure the fundraising activities require that for any fundraiser by the corporation it that basically doesn't conflict with our national school lunch program rules that we're bound by uh, and then finally establish and maintain procedures related to the proposed monetary and other gifts to the corporation from these organizations that you accept their donations um, at our regularly scheduled board meetings representatives and members of the approved corporation student organizations shall in all circumstance circumstances be treated by the corporation employees as interested friends of the schools and as supporters of public education uh, next sentence we basically rely on the support of these organizations um, and reserve the rights to withdraw sponsorship from organizations that violate the bounds of community taste so the revision here is um, it said by the end of May of each year each school each corporate uh, corporation support organization shall submit its tentative goals and objectives along with the fundraising plans for the next school year to the superintendent for review by the board um, first of all that's not always practical to look a year in advance to see what the or the fundraising needs are um, second I personally view that as the role of the building principal knowing the, the needs of the building and um, Dana, you work with this a lot. I see your head shaking, sir. We have a process. There's a form they fill out. It comes to me. I sign off on it. We keep track of it. Uh, we even ask for, after the fundraiser is complete, a report. There's a little section on the bottom that they fill out that actually says what their profit or loss was so that we can uh, test that before that's the work of counselors here. So all of our fundraisers district-wide go through that process. We have these parent support organizations fill out those forms as well, um, but we don't test them because it's not our money. They have separate accounts, but we do keep an eye on them, let's say, to make sure that they're always in a positive, that it makes reasonable sense and everything. Um, if we were to find something that we thought we might want to test, we would talk to the treasurer of the organization. But it's not something that I can actually go to the bank account and start checking into it you know, on my own. And this just would be something them. like boosters or PTOs yes. or okay. Just holding them accountable. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically what then the next uh, sentence says, the next to last paragraph. And then the final paragraph is changing the date from May for them to submit their financials uh, over to the district for review. You know, a lot of school uh, organizations are closing out their year end activities, paying their final bills from field days, et cetera. So we've just ex moved that date to July 31st. That each way the report will be through June 30th. Mm -hmm. And then the new school year starts July 1st. So we'll, they'll give us through June 30th by May 3rd, or by uh, July 31st. Makes sense. As a report. Makes sense. Aligns better with the school year. Mm -hmm. Continual improvement. <laughs> Great. Any concerns? No questions? Mm. Okay. Great. Okay, moving on. Personnel, approve the personnel report dated Thursday, June 13th, 2024. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion, do I have a second? I'll second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 
Business Operations approve the overnight athletic trip for the Lowell High School boys basketball team to participate in the tournament at Carmel High School in Carmel, Indiana and or Westfield High School in Westfield, Indiana from June 21st to 22nd, 2024. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. I'll second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Consent items. Accept the various donations and the total amount of $3,350 to help the, um, fund the Lowell High School Football RDP Alumni ECA for golf outing spon sponsorships. Accept the donation from Carla Gard of Lowell, Indiana in the amount of $7.35 to help support Feed Them Forward Fund to pay down negative student meal balances. Accept the anonymous donation in the amount of $7.87 to help support Feed Them For Forward Fund. Accept the donation from the Lake Prairie Elementary PTO in the amount of $41.50 to help fund the kindergarten study trip. Accept the donations from Lake Prairie Elementary PTO in the amount of $454.63 and $366.63 to help fund the grade one study trip. Accept the donations from Lake Prairie Elementary School PTO in the amounts of $652.13 and $771 to help fund the second grade study trip. Accept the donation from Lake Prairie Elementary PTO in the amount of $363.63 to help fund grade three study trip. Accept the donation from Lake Prairie Elementary PTO in the amount of $220.89 to help fund the grade four fling trip to Sky Zone. And accept the donation from Lake Prairie Elementary PTO in the amount of $124 to help fund the grade five, five fling to Sky Zone. I'll make a motion to accept all nine donations. I have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second. Motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye, motion passes. Public comment not related to agenda items. Okay. Um, the next meeting of the Tri Creek Board of School Trustees is scheduled for Thursday, June 27th, 2024. Anything else? We're looking to have a work session prior to that meeting regarding board policy. Are we still good to look for that, to knock out some of our board policy? Yeah, Everybody yes. good for Thursday for a, a work session? Which Thursday? The 27th. Should be. Up to sure. Um, how long do we want to allot? For policy? <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. I mean, it, we probably need it, but that's a long time. Before. I'll tell you what we've encountered. Like, we'll sit down to do a policy, and we'll, we'll burn a, a good hour to an hour and a half just well, just on the two that we looked at <laughs> tonight. Yeah. So we may not get through as many as we would like to, but, like, after two hours, if, if you and I put in some work next week, and then... We have a board meeting that night, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would it would be short. The plan would be right for it, or and what are we talking about? An hour <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> regarding the board meeting? No, the the meeting you're talking about to go over the work session. That's I, what we're thinking. I would say uh, probably a good hour and a half to two hours to at least dive in. Would so it be healthy snacks? snacks? Healthy, healthy snacks. snacks on no, that. I'm not even, that's information. even unhealthy. So, snacks. do we think <laughs> five o'clock? Could everybody do five o'clock? Are we thinking five would work? I don't know. I'm still if working. You feed me. If you feed me, we could feed you. <laughs> this is the only way I can be here at five. I'll make it work. We'll have some food and just make it a work dinner session and two hours. Very morning. short meeting at yeah, because we'll have a meeting at seven and, and like then our meeting. I don't anticipate a lot. On the meeting, there might be some a personnel report, and so we, we have no presentations. I'm looking at Kevin and Jay and and Dana. It'd be very minimal agenda. Minimal would be fine. Okay. Okay. Five um, o'clock. Real quick, I know that I've seen it all over Facebook, a couple different spots. So if we could say exactly how parents of elementary school kiddos find report cards. I've seen a couple different places where it's not on Sky Zone, or Sky Zone. I, I went to Sky Zone. I went there, and it was a lot of fun. You're looking in the wrong spot there. Yeah, right? It wasn't on Skyward, and so people were concerned about that. Um, so maybe we can just reiterate what that is. We did send paper copies to with every kid. Yes. We can tell them how to get them. Awesome. You know, yeah. that's a good point, too. Like, I always forget that report cards had gone out until I start seeing all the parents posting their stuff. 
maybe as a district we could send a reminder to parents that mm -hmm. report cards are out. Check the here's here's where you the go link. To find. I think yeah. I got one. Yeah. Buildings typically used to do that because they would post the report cards at least at different times of the day. We generally tried to get them to do it at the same time. Okay. But especially at the elementary, when they used to post them. I, I was. Gonna, I, I don't get a, a middle school. I did not get a middle school notification, but I did get a high school like year report cards. Yeah. Are, I, mean, I have gotten them before from third grade. I didn't get any notification at all. <laughs> but if we do that, we might get more interaction with them as well. Part of, part of the goal all along is like to make sure that that, that Canvas Hub is like a one-stop shop for true curriculum instruction assessment reporting. So like we did um, the nicety of all printed paper copies this year to get people used to the new format. For the elementary? For elementary. That's going online next year. We're going to have a grace period of quarter one of paper again, but we're going to have sessions at the beginning where it's like, here's how you get in, here's how you access your account. So like they know exactly what to do and it's in that one spot so that they can see all things at the same place rather than having to go to a bunch of different spots. So we will be moving away from the paper copy just because it's so much easier and it's anywhere, anytime that you can get it as a PDF online. So. And that'll be only on our case grade. K through four, or yeah, five through eight, or five through twelve will have their report cards within Canvas, and then Skywork for the transcript. And it still wouldn't hurt to remind parents you can oh, yeah. find it here. Yeah, the one tricky part, just like Skywork, like you have, like you have to log in and create your account and accept it to go in. So like if you don't do that step, you won't have access online. So we're going to push and prod and encourage them to do that. But if they don't accept our invitation. They won't have an active account. So. Well, and I know some people were like, well, you can go on your kid's device. Well, some true. of the kids don't have devices because they... And this is a, a year-long thing. So this is done at the beginning of the year. Every quarter. Or every quarter. Yeah. And every then quarter. it's reiterated. So it's yeah. the parents' excuse or yeah. fault if they don't follow we the instructions. To your point, Deborah, like we didn't create those accounts this year intentionally because we didn't want to cause the people who wanted them to understand the layout first. Right. Create the account second. So this year was all... You know what I noticed? Um, so Canva, or Canvas, whatever, Canvas is for like the grades and stuff. If you go into Skyward, you see like tardies, which I never log into Skyward because I always was using Canvas. But then. Yeah, there's you know. no attendance keeping in Canvas. It's truly a student management system for academics. It's not the behavioral side. None of that. Yeah, I Discipline, discovered. Discipline, fees, all of those types of things are really more through. Skyward. Maybe with the start of school and the more the more we rely on Canvas for grades, we can kind of dis explain those differences because I had no idea until I got into Skyward for other reasons. And I was like, wow, I didn't know that all came up in here. Um, so helpful advice. Kevin, I have a question. Have we heard back on that grant at all? No. So if you remember, they extended the deadline a month. Okay. So it was originally due on May 1st, yep. so it didn't actually um, close until May 31st. It'll probably take through July 30th at the, at the earliest and maybe even um, into August because of the extension. So we probably won't know until August or early September. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I'm still am optimistic that the fact that they opened it up because they didn't have enough applicants in the pool bodes well for those who were there that had strong applications. So. Yeah. Keep sending the good vibes out. Anything else? Okay. Meeting closed.